I elected to have uh, surgery to correct a deviated septum and when the doctor went in on December 20th, he found tissue that he did not expect to find there. Um, had it biopsy, the report came back December 24th and I had the conversation with the doctor on December 26th uh, of 2007 that I had um, a clear sign of cancer. That led to a diagnosis where it had already metastasized to the blood and to two lymph nodes. When I went through the uh, chemo treatments, um, I had to have a port uh, and I had to have a, a tube, a feeding tube, because the radiation made it uh, basically impossible to swallow. Um, I was uh, unfortunately a super taster. <laughs> So anything that went through that port, whether it be saline, heparin, what have you, anything, I could taste immediately. And so I was as weak as a baby, literally, uh, throughout that treatment, lost 40 pounds. And it took me a solid year and a half to get back to 90% of who I was. Um, and after that, I was not committed to go back through the same levels of stress uh, that I had uh, experienced as a part of a Fortune 20 company. During that time, there was a lot of time for quiet. Um, unfortunately, there was time for isolation because your immune system goes down. But during the times where my immune system had risen um, uh, high enough for me to engage my family, my daughter and I, who um, one of three children, uh, love her dearly, uh, we had rough house and played together and read together every night um, and when this came along it broke that but what we found during that time was that we could play Legos together and we could build and create things and so that became part of our passion whenever we could we would take on a Lego project uh, and it was just wonderful for her to be able to reconnect with, uh, with daddy. Uh, my attitude throughout the entire process was I'd much rather have this diagnosis happen to me than anyone else that I loved. Like I said, I was one of those people that I'm vegetarian. I work out at the gym every day. Um, I only went to doctors very, very rarely because I believed that two Tylenol and a Grand Manier could cure anything. And um, so when when they said big C word to me, I looked around the room to see who the heck they were talking about. It was me, the nurse, and the nurse's assistant. And it was like, okay, somebody else is missing because it surely can't be me. I tried very hard to keep my life going day to day, just like I always did. Um, I'm a very morning person. In fact, I've always, um, had a routine where I get up in the mornings, I go to the gym, I work out there, I get dressed, and then I go into work. Some days I was really, really sick, and I would just kind of sit on a bike and try to keep from falling off. Um, other days I would go to uh, an aerobics class or a Pilates class, and I would just lay on the floor. You know, it's funny how words can have such an impact. Um, one of the things that you hear all the time with breast cancer is about being a survivor. Um, from day one, I made up my mind I was not gonna be a survivor, that I was gonna be a fighter. And so I just kinda, again, I took it every day and said, I gotta get to tomorrow. Um, when I was first diagnosed, a friend of mine asked me, what was my greatest fear? And I told her, I don't have grandchildren yet, and I want to see my grandchildren. I deserve to be able to spoil them. So I certainly have to be around to be able to do that. And, you know, being the fighter for me means taking on new challenges. Um, so I'm actually doing them three day this year. Um, my, it's my sister, my sister-in-law and I, we are the Blister Sisters. Um, and last year they walked in my honor, and this year it's my turn. So I asked him to check a mole that I had on my back, and it was a mole I'd had all my life. 
that my mother used to call it a beauty mark, like the old Marilyn Monroe mole that she had on her face right here. And he said he had to biopsy that too. So without him telling me anything, I thought that it would probably just be basal cell. So they biopsied it, and five days later, he called me and told me I had malignant melanoma, which was a pretty good shock because I didn't even know what malignant melanoma was. Well, after I had the operation, um, I immediately went back to work, and everything was fine, and you did worry, so I had my checkups. Um, at that time, I transferred back to Atlanta and came home. Then after about a couple of years, I thought to myself, you know, there's not a lot of information out there about skin cancer or melanoma. I need to find a way to educate people more about what I went through and how I can be diagnosed early. I started doing events at Delta Airlines and educating in the early detection and awareness of, of skin cancer. And there was a pilot that came into one of my events and he wanted the doctor to look at um, something on his back, but he looked at something on his arm and it turned out to be a melanoma and, ba and we saved his life. The dermatologist, it was a melanoma that he never would have checked. And the doctor told him if he had waited two months, he would have been looking at a lot of things in his life to have to deal with. So we turned in, after I saw the reception at Delta, I started doing walk runs. We do a Braves game. We do events at the state capitol. We talk and educate people about tanning beds and the dangers of it. We developed a ribbon at Scan Foundation that's a polka dotted ribbon and it says, see a spot, call your doc. So we're trying to get that out there and get people to be aware that they need to see a dermatologist and get checked and be aware just like what I did. If I hadn't gone to the dermatologist when I had a little spot on my neck, I never would have found the melanoma. So I feel like that this was my uh, purpose in life is to bring attention and awareness to uh, uh, melanoma and to skin cancer for other people in the community. Uh, then November of 07, uh, regular checkup. Everything was good. Uh, the doctor called me back and he goes, we got a problem. He said, uh, liver, your liver enzymes are up. So they called me back in. Uh, everything, uh, we were running all the tests and a uh, little uh, big noise to us, uh, about a week later, I was gonna be diagnosed with primary liver cancer. And I mean, still to this point, I mean, you can see it just makes me emotional to say it. And uh, we were told, um, <clears throat> that I had probably six months to a year to live. Uh, there can't be a bigger bomb in your life. Uh, this moved along. <clears throat> we were still on the impression that nothing was gonna get any better. Um, that's where we met the uh, liver team that decided, you know, there is a chance. We're gonna give it to you a chance, you know, if you're willing to take it. It's called chemobilization. Uh, basically, they hit you with about 15 shots of chemo at one time. You have very little chance of living after that. But that was the only chance we had to get on the transplant list. Through comas and through going back and forth, uh, through it uh, 13 days after the shot, uh, the end was there. Uh, we had the family. Uh, we had had a priest come every day in these 13 days, and I barely remember much of it in Piedmont Hospital. And then a priest with a bigger hat came. That means you're in trouble. And at that point, they gave me last rites. You know, that's it. Uh, and uh, through the praying and through everything from luck and uh, Georgia Transplant Foundation and friends and family, uh, uh, we were informed that we did have a liver. Like I said, a hard recovery, but after uh, the six month period, they give you a little bit more leeway. But I think on Halloween, I snuck out of the house, got a car dressed up like Ted Nugent, and they found me at the restaurant against uh, the doctor's wishes and Claudia's wishes. But she went with me, and I was back. Uh, but, you know, it's every day is a challenge. Uh, I'm back to the hospital once a month. Uh, they check me out, they make sure I'm right. And, you know, you live month to month. Uh, once that C word is in your vocabulary, um, the cancer word, you put it in a little bitty box and you put it away. <laughs> and you try to do everything about it. And some people are good at it, some people aren't. I don't think about it. You know, I'm good to the point where, you know, God's given me a second chance, third chance, and I'm back. And I'm back wide open. That's it.